Hey, everybody, and welcome back to Jerseys with Josh, the YouTube channel about everything related to NHL game-worn jerseys. And today, I'm talking to two collectors who had what many of us would call a dream come true. They came across six Hartford Whalers jerseys in a consignment shop in Meriden, Connecticut. This is their story. Let's talk about it. Hi, welcome to the show, everyone. What a story we have for you today. I think it's every collector's dream to come across a set of game-worn jerseys in the wild that really haven't been a part of the hobby yet. Kind of like the barn finds that collector car uh, enthusiasts dream of. And it happened to two collectors within our very own game-worn jersey community, Chris and Scott. And today, we're going to talk about how it all came about. We're going to learn more about the jerseys. Chris and Scott, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here, and let's let's get to know both of you a little better. Uh, Chris, we'll start with you. How long have you been in the hobby for, and how did you first get into it? I've been collecting uh, since 1995. Um, my first jersey, and thankfully I still have it, is a Hartford Whalers uh, Francis at Cuchera home jersey. Um, Whalers used to sell them in their gift shop, and the money went to... Uh, UConn Children's Cancer Fund, which was, uh, the Whalers were always a big part of that. So that started the the ball rolling back in 95, and uh, here I am all these years later still going strong. Awesome. Maybe you remember the GameWarn.net forums when they were buzzing. Yep, I was uh, I was Christy on that, on that page. Yeah, I remember it well. Lots of good times to be had on there. What do you primarily collect these days? Just Whalers jerseys or anything else? Um. I recently kind of refocused. I was doing a lot of defunct AHL teams, um, but it was getting out of hand. So I kind of scaled that back. But um, I, I concentrate on Hartford hockey, so not just Whalers, but also Hartford Wolfpack. Uh, I have quite a few Wolfpack jerseys in my collection. Then. And also uh, my wife is into the hobby as well as I am. Uh, her favorite player is Jason LaBarbera. So uh, we collect Jason LaBarbera, uh, jerseys, equipment, anything we can get our hands on related to him. So those are our two big focuses. That's super cool. So then this find was right up your alley. Um, Scott, let's talk about your background in the hobby. What brought you into the hobby and how long have you been collecting for? Uh, I've been collecting for probably about 10 or 11 years now. Uh, I bought my first jersey off eBay just out of, you know, just out of high school and you know, every year for a couple of years, I would probably get one more, one more, and then it just exploded, <laughs> essentially. And uh, I, I made, like Chris, I mainly focus my collection on Hartford Wolfpack. Um, and here we are. So cool. I think the Hartford Whalers logo is the best logo in all of sports history. Uh, it's something that, you know, many of us would love to have in our collection. I do have a Whalers practice jersey in my collection, and I'm excited just to have that little piece uh, of Hartford Whalers history. So let's go ahead and set the stage, right? So I'm at home. I'm scrolling on Facebook, as I often do, and bam, I see a post about a discovery of previously unknown Whalers jerseys. Walk us through that story, if you would. How did it all transpire? Uh, Chris, why don't you kick us off? So it started, I was I was at work, I was eating my lunch, and I'm playing on Facebook, and I see this tag from a former co-worker that probably haven't talked to in over 10 years, this guy, Matt Wren. Um, he tagged me. There was a, a consignment shop uh, not too far from where we live here in Connecticut that uh, the guy had posted on his Facebook page. He had him in his storefront window. And uh, I quickly looked at him and, and I knew right off the bat, just off of the two photos that I, I saw on the Facebook page, I knew that one of the jerseys wasn't game worn. I knew the Murray Craven one wasn't game worn just based on the picture. But I said, this can't be true, you know, because the guy was saying that they were all game worn. So I called the guy up and, uh, he told me they were all game worn and stupid me. I went, well, the Craven's not. And of course, then he started questioning things. So I, I started asking the questions because I knew what to look for. I, I had, um, I currently had three Whaler gamers in my collection. I'd had a few others over the years and I knew what to look for. So I started asking the questions and, and he's answering the questions correctly. And I'm starting to think to myself, can five out of the six truly be game worn? So then he starts telling me his story. The guy that he got him from, um, guy came in the store. It was his uncle's jerseys. 
The uncle was involved in the booster club. And back in the day, the booster club used to get the jerseys and they'd raffle them off. Well, at this point, I'm overly excited because that's exactly the story I wanted to hear based on the story of Whaler jerseys and, and how they were distributed back then. So I, I'm I'm pretty excited. I'm asking questions. And I says to the guy, I says, I'll take them. How much do you want for them? And I'm not going to share exactly what I paid because no, I still don't believe it. And I have the credit card receipt. Um, <laughs> when he ever told me the price, I said, I'll take them all. And he says, you, you even want the one that's not game worn? I said, yeah, sure. Why not? So I said, I'm at work. I'm not going to make it to you in time. Can I give you my credit card? So the guy says to me, my store's busy. Can I call you back? And I start to panic thinking, oh boy, I tipped him off. You know, he, now he knows he has something. So I gave him my information and I immediately got off the phone and I called Scott. I knew he was home and I informed Scott. I didn't ask him. I informed him that he was taking <laughs> a ride to Meriden and he was leaving now. And at first, Scott's like, what are, what are you talking about? I'm like, you're, you're going. You don't have an option. Get in the car. Go. I'm waiting for this guy to call me. If you get there and he hasn't called me back, get get me on the phone. So I said to Scott, I says, here's the deal. You go and you get these jerseys. And I'm giving you one of the jerseys. Because Scott had always said he wanted a Whalers gamer. And with the prices of them now, it's just so out of hand. He kind of came to the realization that eh, maybe it's just not going to happen. you know. So I figured... For what I was paying, and he was doing the legwork, the least I could do is, you're getting a jersey. So um, at that point, I hung up the phone and uh, went back to work, nervous and trying to figure what illness I was going to fake to get <laughs> out of there. And that's where Scott comes in, so I'll let Scott take over from here. Yeah, so he called me, said, you're taking a ride to Meriden. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I drive there, and he's messaging me pretty much the whole way there. <laughs> it's like keep giving me updates. You know, the guy hasn't called me back. The guy hasn't called me back. Then I get maybe about five minutes away from the place. He's like, he called me back. The deal is done. And I'm like, okay. And I, I still don't even know if how many of these things are real. Neither of us do. So mm -hmm. I, I go and I, I get there, walk in the door. I tell them, you know, the shop was a little busy. So I walk up to the counter and say, I'm here to pick up, you know, the, the whaler jerseys so they were like okay and so went back and got the guy gave him my name yep checked out and he hands me these jerseys and he says you know ha, you know enjoy them a few of them have blood on them and i'm just like oh yeah there you go <laughs> <laughs> so then my heart just started racing and so i get him into the car as quick as i can because it feels like you know I'm holding contraband, you know, and I'm like on the, on the way home, I'm like constantly looking in the mirror, seeing if, you know, the FBI is going <laughs> to like swarm the car or, you know, something, you know, and I get him home and I'm just like, I, I put him down and I start looking at it and I'm like, oh my God, like, I can't believe I have these in my possession. So I'm taking pictures and I'm sending them to Chris and he's just like going crazy and, and I hand them off to him later that night, and we're just looking at him in awe. Just we, we, it was literally silent for what, like half an hour. Yeah, it was it, Scott and I and my wife sitting here in the in the dining room, and and like the only words being uttered were, "I, I can't believe this is real," and we're holding the jerseys at this point. You know, and we're still saying that, still, still <laughs> saying, it, and just looking at each other and laughing. You know, getting. So exciting. Just, just never thought something like this would happen. Yeah, there had to have been some major celebrating that night when it, when it all kind of hit. Here's a shot, I think, from that night, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, my wife said, because the uh, the shot we did of the jerseys that we had posted on the on the page, you know, was getting a lot of comments and a lot of likes and stuff. So my wife took the picture of the two of us with the jerseys, and she posted it as one of the comments saying, in case you don't think it's real, here, here it is, you know, and I just figure one of those things where now we'll always have the photo to to remember that night by, because uh, I'm sure we'll be talking about this for a number of years. Yeah. I think lots of people will be talking about it, literally, it like winning the lottery. I mean, it, yeah. it's what a, what a crazy, crazy moment in time. Um, so we've got all six here. 
Mm -hmm. Five of them are game worn. Let's take a look at the five game worn jerseys one by one. I've kind of done a little bit of research, but you may have some other color to provide. Uh, we'll kick it off with this Mark Hansen's jersey. And I have to tell you, you sent me the pictures over, right? So I could put them up on the screen. When I opened up this picture file, my eyes bulged right out of my head. I mean, look at the wear on this thing today. You mm -hmm. know, you're lucky to see a rip, a tear, a puck mark. And this is just beaten. So, I mean, wow. What what are your thoughts on this jersey? Well, this is the jersey that, as I said, the deal for Scott was he gets a jersey for going. Mm. This is the jersey he picked. Yep. And uh, I think everybody could agree, you know, he he made the smart move there. My, my wife kind of had her eye on this one, too. But um, we have our Frankie Cuchera is, is this style. So uh, it was a little easier to, to give it up. But... Uh, also, the fact that, like you said, the, the wear on it, and it's just so hammered and stuff, you know, for Scott to to finally get a Whalers jersey and then get one like this, it's just, yeah. it was just so cool. Um, it, it looks like somebody died in it. Yeah, the pictures, <laughs> the pictures don't do it justice, no, to be no, honest with you. Not at all. Incredible. I got to tell you, I, I, I'm typically a no autograph kind of guy. This mm -hmm. is a jersey I would 100% make an exception for because it's so rare and so special. So yeah. uh, is that something you think you'll keep on there or just kind of leave it as is? I'll just leave it as is. You know, what? why mess with it, you know? Yeah. Totally fair. Totally fair. All right. Let's take a look at the second jersey. Uh, this is Jim Sandlack. So mm -hmm. for those of you who don't know his background, he played for the Whalers in 93-94 and 94-95. So this is the... Uh, 93, 94 set one away jersey. So tell me about this jersey. So this jersey s showed a good amount of wear as well. You know, obviously the blue, it's tougher to see than uh, than on the whites, but a lot of team repairs, some good wear to it. On the, the back um, hem, it looks like there's some post paint or something on it down by the CCM logo. Um, this jersey ended up going to uh, Scott's brother, uh, Greg, um, I said to him, I said, look, your brother's getting one. And, and Greg is kind of in the same spot with one in a Whalers gamer. So I said to him, I said, you know, he knows what, what I paid for him and stuff. So I says, you take the jersey. We'll figure out, you know, down the road what we're going to what we're going to do. Um, you know, for me, it, it became more of uh, share, you know, spread spread the wealth type of thing, you know, share, share it. I mean, it's not, you know, the extra money I could have done by, going there myself and selling them all and everything. I, I, you know, I could have made some good money, but it wasn't about that for me. It was about, you know, these two guys that could fulfill a dream. And and one of the other jerseys went to a mutual friend of ours. Uh, I had made him a promise years ago. So uh, to be able to fulfill that promise was, was pretty cool too. Uh, but this is another great, great example of that era Jersey, you know, with the wear, the multiple team repairs. Um, another blood one stains on the crest. Yeah. Another one where the, Photos just don't do it oh, justice. Yeah. <laughs> this one and the, and the Jansons were the two with the most wear. I love this part of the hobby where you opted to share the, the love. And I know it's going to bring so much joy um, to both Chris and Greg. I mean, I think that's really special uh, in that case. I want to talk about the colors for a second. Since I am a 90s kid... Uh, this is what I remember the Whalers wearing. But, of course, you've got the traditional green background. Would love to know which one each of you prefers, the green or the navy. Uh, you know, the, the green is just, you know, it, it, it screams Whalers, you know. Like, whenever you think of the Whalers, you think of green, but... You know, again, like you, I'm a 90s kid, and whatever I do remember of the Whalers, it's them wearing the, the Navy in silver. So I, I would have to go with the, with the Navy. I would, I would have to say the same. I mean, I'm a little bit older. I do go back, you know, as a kid into the 80s, going to Whalers game as a kid. Once we got into this style, it was like early college years for me. Um, the big thing here in Hartford is, is if you're a Whalers fan, you used to say, I bleed green. Well, I still bleed green uh, and I'll always bleed green. So it really doesn't matter what uniform it is, what color it is. I'm going to love it regardless. But the reason I would say this is this was the era where I first started dating my wife. 
she didn't know the first thing about hockey. I started taking her to games. She fell in love with it. Um, we still go to games together. She collects with me. So for me, because of that, this era, it means the most to me because um, as a lot of my friends say, especially those in the Jersey hobby, you don't know how lucky you are that you have the wife you do that's in it with you. And and I wouldn't have the collection I do if it wasn't for that because, you know, I can kind of buy a jersey and then pray for forgiveness and I don't really have to. So it's kind of nice. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, on that note, I am curious what you both think of the Hurricanes and their reverse retro with the green. Uh, do you cheer for the Hurricanes now? Is that like just a complete faux pas and a pass? What are your thoughts? Well, I, I can't root for the Hurricanes, and now I can't wait for Dwayne and Feldman to see this interview because <laughs> I have two friends out in New York that constantly ride me about Peter Camano's. Um as I said, I still bleed green. I'm still bitter to this day. I will be bitter till the day I die. Um, as crazy as it sounds, um, you know, I'm a guy, I married my high school sweetheart and I've been with her 29 years. So I got lucky there, but um, that was my true love. You know, the Hartford Whalers, that was that was the first, really as, as corny as it sounds, that was the first real breakup in my life. Um, my wife and I were lucky enough a few years ago, we went up to Boston uh, with a, a mutual friend um, to see the Hurricanes play as the Whalers. It was weird. It was really strange. Um, it was weird to walk around Boston in an Andrew Castles jersey and people tell me nice jersey. Normally I was running for my life back in the day with the Bruins and Whalers. Um, but no, I, I can't root for the Hurricanes. I never will. Uh, I'm a Montreal fan now. Um, but I'll always be a Whalers fan. Yeah, and me, I'm a little too young to remember the Whalers. They were five when they left, and the only thing hockey-related that I knew back then was Wayne Gretzky and the Mighty Ducks, <laughs> the movies. So, and I, I'm a Ranger fan because of the Hartford Wolfpack. You know, I, I started going to Wolfpack games, so it's, you know, you follow the guys getting called up, and uh, yeah, that, that the whole... Hurricanes thing wearing Whalers jerseys, it, it, it's weird. <laughs> totally it, it seems fair. Wrong, but, you know, it's all about money nowadays. I can only imagine how that would have felt at the time. I would be beside myself if the Sabres ever left Buffalo. So I can only imagine. Um, okay, appreciate the segue there. Uh, let's talk about Yvonne Corivo. He played for the Whalers from 89-90 to 91-92. He had some stints kind of up and down in the AHL during those seasons. Love the mesh here, by the way. What can you tell me about this jersey? This is one of the ones that I decided to keep for myself. This is from 9091 season. Shows very light wear. He didn't play a lot of games. Like you said, he was kind of back and forth between here and uh, Springfield. That's when they had the Indians and they were the Whalers affiliate back then. But um, great jersey. Like I said, light, light wear to it. It is autographed up on uh, one of the shoulders. Um, you can kind of see it in that back shot there. Uh, I'll leave that alone. I'd prefer it not to be, but it is what it is. And I'm not going to go tampering with a Whalers gamer from that era. So the autograph will stay. Makes total sense. And I know we talked about the green background versus the Navy. And I got to say, this looks great in white. Um, mm -hmm. It's just mm -hmm. an incredible yeah. jersey. All right, next we've got a Bob Bodak jersey. So according to Hockey DB, he played exactly one game with the Whalers in 89-90. He did have seven penalty minutes in that game. Uh, I'm not sure if it was a home or away game, though. Um, it also kind of looks like there's evidence of a nameplate change. Like, what's your take on this one? So this one, um, this one actually went to a friend of ours up in Saratoga, my buddy Dave, um, who I had made a promise to. He's originally a Connecticut boy uh, and he wanted a Whalers Gamer for his collection. So I called him and, and he's getting this one. Um, after I made that deal with him, um, I started to do some research. I got Mark Rankin involved. Um, he's helped me before with some Whaler stuff and, and we've gone back and forth discussing things over the years. As you said, a nameplate change. Scott had picked up on that right away as well. Um, but as Mark had said, they didn't really use nameplates back then. So he was saying, does it look like there was a letter or something? I'm like, and at first I was like, ah, oh, it's a nameplate. So I, I took it back out because I took all those pins off and everything. And, and I started to look and 
kind of hard to see. You can see it a little bit in that picture where the, the name is, uh, is, is zoomed in on. Um, underneath that K, it appears to me that that was an E at one time. If you go to the B, there was a, there was a letter before that B, and it has a, from what I can see, the, the remnants, it has a straight line. So it was either a B, an R, or something like that. So 89-90 um, is the season that jersey was worn. That's the only year they wore these jerseys. If you look at the sleeves, the sleeves go straight across, where if you look at the pr years prior and the years post, like the 90-91 Corvo, they're slanted. So it's a one-year style. So in talking to Mark, at first I was kind of excited. I was thinking maybe Steve Weeks, but Weeks was gone well before these jerseys. Mark is leading me to think, and I think he's kind of, he hasn't officially said it, but I think he's leaning that way. I'm not 100% sure yet, but the belief is that this would have been before Bodak, this would have been uh, Richard Brodeur, King Richard, the goalie. This would have been his final NHL jersey. And it's it's possible. Mm -hmm. I'm not 100% sold. I mean, King Richard didn't play too many games. And, of course, photos back then are kind of grainy. So we may never know for sure. But there's a very good chance that it was his before it went to Bob Bodak. So if that's the case, uh, Dave hasn't gotten the jersey yet. He's going to be getting it over uh, Thanksgiving holidays. He may have in his hands what ended up being King Richard's last NHL jersey. Absolutely unbelievable. And that part of the mystery is a lot of the fun of these things, trying to figure out the little bits and pieces. And boy, that would be uh, incredible. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to ask you about the pins and whether they would stay or they would go, but question answered. All right. Uh, let's take a look at this. Mark Bergevin, he played four games with the Whalers in 9091. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on this one? Um. Yeah, another one with light wear. You can see that that nice mark uh, underneath the three. That's pretty much the only wear that that jersey has. It's kind of funny. He played four games where Corvo played, I want to say it was like 23, 21 or 23. This actually had better wear on it than the Corvo did. Um, this one, I had a bunch of people reach out to me. I did on the Corvo as well, but I had a bunch of people reach out to me. My intention was I was going to sell one of these. Um Started getting some offers, and some were legitimate. Others were some pretty low ball offers. But uh, my wife finally said, put it in the closet. She goes, they're not making any more. The prices aren't going to go down. It's not like we have to sell it. You know, we made our money back, you know, from so we're not out anything, you know. Um, so she said, put it in the closet. She said, or if you can trade it for a green one, because now you got two whites, maybe you can trade it for a green one. Um my wife and I are Canadian fans now, so, you know, Mark Bergevin isn't necessarily our favorite guy, um, although he did get us to a cup final a couple of years ago. But um, for now, I'm going to hold on to it. You know, somebody's got a green one out there that uh, they may want to part with. I, I I might be willing to give up the Corvo or the Bergevin for that. But um, for now, just going to hold on to it and be happy I got two from that era. Very um, cool. Um, I am curious. Um, we know we're keeping the, like, you've kind of talked through all of them, which is, is awesome. I wonder if you'll go to any conferences like the Migre Expo or anything else in the area to kind of display these and let other people see them um, and kind of feel that piece of history. We've talked about it before. I, my wife and I did the Migre Expo early, early on, like within the first uh, uh, couple of years of, um, of them doing it. So it's been a while, but um. Scott and I and, and a mutual friend of ours in Hartford, we had talked about it, you know, maybe going and doing an all Hartford thing. Um, I think we're at the point now um, we can all have our own table. I don't think we'd have to share, but um, something we definitely have talked about. And I, mm -hmm. and I think now um, we probably should do it and have, you know, being that we know where all the jerseys are. Um, we would just have to get our friend from Saratoga to let us borrow the Bodak again, but it would be kind of cool to, uh, put them all together again and show them off at an expo like that. We, we even talked about ourselves and our, our friend Chris here, and another Chris here in Hartford, uh, maybe trying to do our own uh, Game Worn Expo New England area because we don't have a lot out this way. So, um, you know, maybe do something like Central Mass type of thing so everybody can 
from all parts. Well, we have friends up in Maine and stuff. So that's another possibility too, because the Maine crew has said they'd come down and we have friends all over New England. So um, whether we do migrate or we maybe do our own thing, um, that definitely something we would like to do. That'd be amazing. Um, we've covered so much ground tonight. Is there anything else that you would like to share or let other collectors know about uh, this story? Um, the only thing I could say is, you know, it, like I said earlier, this hobby, you know, for me, it wasn't about the money. It was about uh, making some dreams come true, keeping a promise. And, and you know, I truly believe in karma. And, I, and I've been I've been fortunate in this hobby. I've had some some other decent finds over the years, nothing like this that would compare. But, um, you know, I truly believe in that. If, if it wasn't for some of the other deals I did, um, stuff like selling jerseys back to players, families and stuff like that this would have never happened. So, um, well, you know, sometimes making that extra money is nice and stuff. At the end of the day, you know, this hobby small. We all we all know each other, you know. Um, so your word is all you got, you know. Keep keep your word, do do the right thing, and, and this hobby will reward you. It's a great hobby, and it's a great thing to be a part of. And uh, both of us, I'm sure you could say it too, you know, we've made lifelong friends just based off of this hobby. Yeah. So keep collecting, collect what you like, um, but, you know, remember, remember the people that have helped you along the way and, and return it when you can. Completely and wholeheartedly agree. Gentlemen, thanks again so, so much for coming on the show, talking about these jerseys so everybody could really hear that entire story. For those viewers out there, I hope you enjoyed the story. I'd love to see your comments on which jersey is your favorite or any other thoughts that you have. So please do post them up. And thanks for watching and enjoy the hobby.